Lynx, join the channel here over at Subscribestar. I got a mailbox, mail me some comics or perhaps a festive Christmas beanie. So Shoe on Head explains why Disney sucks so bad lately. So what happened was this girl, Sky Roberts, who I think is some sort of cosplayer or something, had a simple, uh, pretty simple tweet where she says, uh, so what do people want from Disney? Every single movie seems to be struggling at the box office, even if it's high quality. Is it because of Disney Plus, the streaming service taking away from the mainstream movies, which yeah, probably has something to do with it? Or does the uh, right-wing political aisle just hate Disney now? And part of the problem is people can't even honestly discuss why diversity is cancer, and it is, and doesn't sell tickets because the platforms won't allow honesty, and the soy boys will dox the person discussing it if they're, you know, somebody important and get them fired. And by that I mean like, well, you're discussing it, bigot. Yeah, this channel's like 3,000 followers. It, it's, it's, I don't mean, this isn't a real channel. I mean like real channels. How come they don't discuss it? Because they have money at risk. If this channel gets nuked, it's just not the end of the world. But for big channels where it is their, it's either a part-time job or a full-time job, it just doesn't get covered. So nobody talks about how they really want blonde princesses and straight characters, which they do, because it's not politically correct to just admit how awesome they are. And we are awesome. The funny thing I was thinking about is Disney has the power to make, like if, if I was given uh, control at, at Disney, or really any normal person, they have the power to make any movie they want. If they wanted you just go back to their peak 80s and 90s and make those sorts of movies, you know, with all the fair, beautiful people of the light type of thing with the uh, red haired and the blonde haired and the green and blue and hazel eyes characters, you know what I'm saying? They absolutely could make those movies. Any big company that makes movies, Amazon, Warner Brothers, Netflix, Disney, any big company could do that if they wanted to. I'm sure their shareholders want them to. They could make a blonde movie free of diversity and the LGBTV characters. The Twitter pussies, yes, they would whine and they would bitch, but they'd go watch the movies. They wouldn't admit it. They wouldn't t t tell the other SJWs, like, we're going to boycott this movie. It's too blonde. And then the movie would like make over a billion dollars and the left wingers would be looking at each other. It's like, so what happened, guys? Did you secretly watch the movie? It's like, well, I, I had to take my kid to go see the movie because they, well, yes, people love those type of movies. That's the thing. Everybody would watch those movies and they would be hugely successful. Now, don't you think it's a little weird that no big company makes a diversity-free movie? Doesn't anyone want to write articles on that or ask some questions about why nobody makes movies with, oh, dare I say, just European people or characters? They make black, Asian, uh, Mexican movies, but and probably Indian movies too, if I think about it, but they don't make just Euro movies. Doesn't that strike anyone as weird? Why am I the only one who's making videos talking about the missing European movies? What about people who don't want these non-white, non-straight characters? Where are those straight white movies? It's this giant black hole of entertainment that is missing, but it distorts the fabric of uh, space-time around it. It's, it's not so much that Hollywood is made up of all these globalist propaganda, it's that nobody talks about it. Why am I the only one discussing it? This absence is not is just obvious to anyone who follows films or pop culture, even casually. So when does Disney or Hollywood make a movie just for European people? Why do they always force the white characters to be with non-European characters? But Wakanda can be a tribal movie with just that group of people. What gets me is, or what was the other one, the Blue Beetle movie that, that bombed, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other movies. You start looking through Disney bombs and um, superhero bombs, and there's a ton of these movies losing money. But um, what gets me is that the media is so totally controlled by them that this type of thing is never discussed. Otherwise, the ADL, SPLC, ACLU, and the useful Twitterverse idiots will just get their advertisers to cancel them. So you get this divergence for what the woke cancer Hollywood is making, and the audience just isn't showing up because there's nobody in the mainstream who's saying that a POC princess won't sell or POC Peter Pan, with they, they made that movie, movie just a couple months ago, or making girl power everything with... 
uh, um, Charlie's Angels or the Terminator movie or the, the X-Men movie uh, or race-swapping European myth-based characters, specifically with Africans for some reason. It's almost always replacing European with African, usually red or blonde with black. It's like it's part of some ritual or the pieces to a larger puzzle as if there's something else going on that is not shown to the public. Doesn't anyone stop and look at the long list of woke Disney bombs and ask why Disney keeps making movies that the audience won't pay for? Is, is Disney negligent? Are they reckless? Are they intentional? Where, is it, where do they lie on that intent spectrum? Are they crazy? Or are they just intoxicated on mountains of Bolivian marching powder? I'm sure it has something to do with it. Sherlock Holmes said that when you exclude every other theory, you've got to closely examine what is left. You just butchered that quote i know but there's like no research that goes into these videos but disney has market research they know that replacing the red-haired european mermaid with a non-european just won't be as successful as if they had just left it alone and what a nice careful way to say that take the the latest movie wish Market research knows a blonde, blue-eyed girl would make much more money than a non-European character, though they made her as fair as they possibly could. So if Disney is just an entertainment company and not a soul-stealing portal to the underworld sacrificing uh, children to Moloch which they are, if they're just an entertainment company looking to make a profit, why did they pick the characters, I'm going to get that off, get struck, with the lowest audience appeal? Most of the potential audience can't identify with a POC character like that. They want uh, the people of the light, people who look like you and I, or better version, better looking versions of me at least. People will tell you what they want by what they pay for, not what the woke uh, Twitter either say they want or the ridiculous globalist media says that people want. What they pay for is what they want. Anyone in business knows this. So doesn't it seem funny that Hollywood doesn't know this or that they do know this and that they're ignoring it to push this propaganda even if it loses them money or rather their shareholders money. I guess the best kind of money to lose is other people's money. And um, Anyway, this girl's tweet got her a lot of attention because she started with the shifting of the blame to the right wing somehow, which uh, the thing is, there's plenty of left-wingers to make any movie successful. There's plenty enough women to make, obviously, Barbie successful, a billion and a half dollars. So she's saying that the movie needs right-wingers to be successful or Disney movies in general. Why? The only way I would think that would make sense would be if the majority of the audience for Disney was right-wingers or if she's saying that the right-wingers somehow influenced the left-wingers to not see movies that ordinarily they'd want to see, that the, the Phantom, the Quartering, the Odins, the, the, all those canals and the, the, the Yellow Flash, on those, those YouTube characters are so powerful that they're able to stop people from watching m- movies. That's, that's insane. I mean, cool if true, but I really doubt it. The Marvels was a left-wing, vagina-powered film that women didn't want to see. And the left-wing pussies are in this position where they can't just admit that they don't like gay or non-European characters. They won't publicly admit it, but their spending habits will tell you. People love European, and they love tribal stories. The old Disney movies sold well because of that. But the globalists who run Disney now say that they're trying to sell to the new non-white West, but their movies don't sell. And they don't care. This is about more than just movies. It's a whole system under the surface that almost nobody but us tinfoil hat types are talking about. But I can prove it just by looking at the box office. Weird that no mainstream media will discuss it. The movies are only there to push propaganda. What do you think Hollywood is doing with these affirmative action hiring rules and you know the, the Bechtel stuff about screen time vaginas have to discuss things that are whatever, or all the representation that's required on screen or behind the sets? Globalist diversity propaganda is the accepted default now. It is a done deal. They're never going to change things. That's why I seriously say that Hollywood is going to morph into something unrecognizable in the next few years. Just watch the first 10 minutes of Strange World. It is all POC sodomy. So how can the right wing have any effect on left wing movies? It might be true that Disney was trying to leave its old right wing audience behind, which was probably too uh, too, uh, nationalist, uh, family-based, Christian, uh, conservative for them. Uh, The left-wing audience is more anti-family, and they're very much into sexualizing kids 
and sodomy. We're really into that. Some of the movies that haven't done well, Strange Worlds, uh, Elemental, uh, or The Eternals, Indiana Jones 5, uh, The Marvels, Ant-Man, the, the Black Mermaid movie, and then the Panda movie was a monster loss at $170 million. And then Peter Pan. And, I mean, you start looking through the m- bombs of the past 10 years, you realize Disney's in really big trouble. And um, it doesn't seem like it because they have a lot of old IP money coming in. But they can't continue to lose, you know, half a billion dollars to a billion dollars on these kind of movies. And then that Wish movie that came out, I saw the other night. And just to make sure that I understood things, I wanted to have my finger on the pulse of Disney. I went back and I I watched Strange Worlds, a movie where everyone is mostly POC and the only Euro-based characters have to be in some mixed race relationship with the POCs to kind of give them... Uh, justify their existence so every good character was um, black or Asian and the white man was a total pussy and his father was sort of evil so Disney um, for example let's just take this movie and let's swap out the characters just the black and Asian characters make them evil and make the white characters the good ones can you do that for some reason Hollywood will not do that In fact, if you even suggest a reversal like that on Twitter, the Twitter kids will respond with personal (laughs) insults, which is sort of related because these woke Disney movies don't arise in a vacuum. The audience doesn't want to see these ridiculous movies. Why? I mean, they're just not, they're just obviously Frankfurt School, you know, levels of propaganda. Why would they want to see movies where they and their tribe are portrayed as the bad guys every single time? To the point where if you simply look at tones, skin tones, or, or hair tones, or eye tones uh, on the, of the characters, you can say 100% of the time who the good and bad characters are. Well, that destroys a willing suspension of disbelief. Movies are supposed to leave you guessing, and they're not. You simply know, like with Wish... It's like, the, who was the evil wizard uh, king? Well, you know, he looked like me. And who was the, the good character? Well, she was a POC. F- anyway, so keep in mind that the movies overall don't sell. And when you mention that, they ask what YouTube um, Hugo Boss type, like the quartering or something. Who who told you that these movies aren't selling well? It's like, dude, you can just go look at the box office numbers. The woke movies don't sell. Barbie sold because it had two beautiful blondes as the lead characters. So these uh, shoe on head and the Twitter SGWs are going back and forth about what good movies are, but a lot of them are scared to just be honest. Just kind of, why don't you just say the stuff I'm saying? Because you'll get demonetized and you'll lose your channel. And that's the truth of the matter is only small channels can say this kind of stuff, but they don't have the reach. So once they the channels hit a certain level, if they want to maintain their monetization, they just don't talk about this stuff. So it's this whole missing area. The thing is, what is good or bad when they discuss movies is kind of soft language, it's deflecting language. I can tell you the commonalities I notice with movies that don't sell. Uh, the BLT stuff, the, the, the BLT, QTV, GP stuff, all that stuff, that the, the kind of forcing relationships. That's like 1% of the population. Nobody wants that. Uh, anything beyond that is kind of theory, and it, it doesn't really matter. One obvious reason is, well, most people are straight, so they want to see their own relationships on screen, or they might view the relationships negatively for some reason, but none of the reasons actually matter. The other thing is that uh, non, uh, non-white characters don't sell as well on average that's just the objective truth and being offended about it to virtue signal on social media doesn't change anything and it doesn't get butts in seats so disney has these values where they want to make movies with non-euro characters and sodomy and a strange world uh, showed you very few people want to see disney delve into diverse sodomy type of movies and Strange World was pretty far out as an example because everyone was POC and uh, BLT, except for the dad who was a token, but he was also portrayed as a total pussy cuck who was into a mixed tribe relationship, and they're always like kissing and all over each other. It was uncomfortable to watch in a kid's movie. In fact, there's a lot of um, adult prurient content, and it was combined with those under the age of consent mixed together. Um, I mean, if you showed someone a few decades ago, this was a Disney movie with these kind of adult themes with kids, you you just wouldn't, like, I imagine in the 90s, like, showing somebody, this is the future of Disney, they'd be like, how did you guys allow yourself to get this far? 
Um, so that was the other thing that people are not into is tribe mixing, where you have a fair and dark character together, that sort of thing. Nobody wants to see that kind of mixing. I mean, like nobody wants to see that of all the backgrounds of the potential audience. Nobody's into that. And when I say that, the Twitter SGWs lose their minds because they can't handle a different opinion. I'm just giving perfectly valid reasons why these woke movies fail, but they get triggered and they just make personal attacks. They don't explain why they didn't see the movie or if they did see it, what, what they liked about it. I think I'm few, one of the few who are just kind of openly saying that diversity characters don't sell. Like, how, why is that so hard to say? And the BLT characters absolutely don't sell. Um... POCs can sell if it's a situation like a Black Panther type of movie. Because really the truth is, they go, that's the most diverse movie ever. It's, it's all black. Yeah, that's what we mean. Well, that's not what diversity means. But the truth is diversity doesn't sell. Groups or tribes want to see themselves no matter what tribe they are. Each tribe doesn't really want to see the other tribe. And these preferences don't arrive in a vacuum. What people want to see on screen depends on what's going on in the real world. And right now, people hate each other. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. The last thing they want to see is groups forced together on screen, where it's just so obvious it's propaganda. Especially where it's the same silly trope every time, where blonde-haired man bad and dark-haired person good. It literally is that simple and tight of a correlation where you could just draw a line of hair and eye and skin color and 90% of the, the bad characters are going to be on one side of the line and 90% you get the idea. It's The correlation is super tight to just simply with eye color. It's like lighter features are going to be bad and darker features are going to be good. And that's not just this Disney, but it's all the Hollywood. And anyway, um, so this guy has a good point. He goes, uh, have you considered looking at the hits that were successful and working backwards from there. So, I mean, he's saying what I just said. It's like you're going to find the commonalities of uh, what sells and what doesn't sell. And Disney knows that. Hollywood knows that. So that tells you that they're running a, this overall, it's a trillion-dollar industry, um, and they're doing something for a motive that you don't understand because it's not financial. It's for this other motive to... To do other things. Anyway, um, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks to everyone over at Subscribe Star, and I'll see you guys all next episode.